you know, a lot of people are just so used to the everyday brands that they go to, and I won't mention any other brands, um, but when they go on a regular basis, it's that habit. You got to break that habit. So when yes. they see something, usually people are buying on um, price or they're buying on um, something they know. So if mm -hmm. you have a product that's very similar in price and they give it a try, and then they uh, do a little research, they look at your product, they actually buy your product. Yes. And now you just change the customer's mindset. And now they go, okay, you know, the one thing with our hemp products is a lot of people pick it up and they'll be, oh, hemp, is this going to get, we have cat litter and animal bedding. Is, that's what we get all the time is my, is my um, animal going to get high off of this product, yes. you know? And the answer is no, it's a hundred percent of the stock. It's, yeah. you know, it's all natural. <laughs> so that's, that's one misconception. But as we continue to put products of hemp, canaf, jute into the market, um, at some point, that's the new norm, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a long-term mission, right? There. Yeah. Hey, Derek, good morning. How are you? Well, I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining in. I uh, really appreciate your time. I appreciate your time as well. And, you know, what we're doing here in this sustainable uh, food space and product space is, uh, I think, going to be changing the world. So thanks for helping change the world with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So hi, viewers. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the new episode of Sustainable Future Food Stock. Today we have with us Derek Cross from the United States. Derek has been a pioneer in the United States, inspiring and influencing thousands of people. With over 10 years in the hemp industries, Derek has become a self-taught hemp chef, self-published cookbook author and a public speaker. He has been involved with legislation in several states, including Nebraska, Wisconsin, Texas, Oklahoma, and Colorado. Established global recognition and global networks. Derek has also been a great influence and mentor to others seeking direction in the industry. His passion for supplying sustainable solutions utilizing industrial hemp is his greatest priority. Derek is environmentally driven with a passion to plant the seeds of wellness for the people and the planet. So he says, if we plant the seeds in the mind, we plant the seeds in the soil. So uh, Derek, I mean, this is such a lovely, I mean, uh, this is such a lovely point, which I came across uh, with your profile. If you can, you know, uh, briefly uh, elaborate it for the viewers. Well, thank you so much for that uh, enlightening introduction. And that is uh, absolutely correct. So um, going around, seeing where we are in this world, uh, we, we take little bits and pieces and we um, learn from our past and make a better future. So, you know, as you stated, I've been in this space for, well, it's close to 14 years, educating and innovating, utilizing uh, one of the most sustainable crops on the planet, all food crops, in my opinion, nurtured the right way, have uh, their place for sustainability. Want That's it. You know, if we don't have food, we don't have life. So, right. you know, we have to take care of our uh, sustainable food sources. And, you know, the way we see the, hmm, the, the population growth, we have to be able to keep up with that. And when we educate about the, the healthy foods, we make healthy people, but we have to look at replenishing and replacing the nutrients into the soils too, because right. if uh, we have over uh, produced farming, um, we're wasting water, we're looking at different, um, you know, the watershed, goes off the land and into the river. So everything we put on to that goes downstream. Everything we do is so vital to our existence. And, sure. you know, the products we make from plants like hemp and canaf and jute and those products, you know, we as humans have to continue to start purchasing with our dollars and understanding, um, you know, sustainability matters because- Absolutely. Uh, you know, and so that's what's been my driver. 
Um, and another part of it is uh, we all eat wrong on this planet, in my opinion. You yeah. know, <laughs> uh, everybody goes down to the burger stand and just uh, shoves, you know, uh, everybody has their own opinions on what food source they're going to eat, but we are what we eat and health yeah. matters, you know, Absolutely. here today, gone tomorrow, but did you live the best of today? And, you know, did you nutri put the nutrients your body needs to yes. combat diseases and things, you know? I so agree with you on this. <laughs> yeah. And the other part of it real quick, as well as uh, the products that we make from these plants, uh, when I go on vacation or I, I, wherever you look, our earth is riddled with pollution and yes. plastics and garbage. So as sustainable humans, let's change what we're doing and the products can replace those other everyday use products. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're working on things like uh, disposable, now paper straws are big, right? So that change is moving. You know, they're making more plastics with um, starches that will dissolve. Yes. You know, there's other companies that are making those rings for like uh, beer cans and things that hard plastic is now an edible plastic that if yes. it were to go into the oceans, it's like a food source for, you know, nobody wants to see animals get um, uh, eating on plastic no nobody does and it's just so disheartening what we're doing to this yeah. planet by our our consumption and food you know on the go is wrapped in single-use plastics it's wrapped in these containers styrofoams you know you can look at your takeouts you look at so i see a big push more and more people are now that's where i say if you plant the seed in the soil you plant the seed in the mind in the so, mind first so, it's all education, right? Yes. And it's just making those subtle changes. Absolutely. You know? And, and that's, that's the driver for the next hundred to the thousand years, you know? Absolutely. And if we don't, we don't have a plan of B. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So, so, so uh, Derek, I mean, since you have any, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. No, go ahead, please. So, uh, you know, since you have an extensive experience in the CPG industry in the U.S., so if you can please suggest a few tips for emerging brands to identify that right target audience or, you know, define the customer in the, in the natural food space. Well, it's kind of along the lines of what we were just talking about. So people are now getting the message. People are seeing it. So the, the advertisement, the education that's going in it, you see the natural food products exposed. More and more people are showing their wares, like the plastics, the utensils, the, the single-use plastics. That's incorporated. Now the message is getting out there further, and people mm -hmm. are starting to go, oh, light bulb, uh, let's mm -hmm. vote with our dollars, or, or you know, this is the company we want to back. Um, it goes back to, like, on our, you know, we're 100% all natural. And so that's the c customer and consumer that we're targeting but we don't have to because when it's on the shelf side by side, people will go, hmm, okay, well, this is all natural. What's the difference? So they'll pick up the package. They'll read what's in the package. Oh, yes. this company is great. I love what they're doing. It's all natural. And now you just made a new customer. Yes. Because that, that's what the people are looking for. You yeah. Know? Most people, a lot, some people still don't care, but you know, through uh, branding and products on the counters, when you have those people that maybe don't care come over and they're like, oh, you're using uh, Stevia instead of this. You're using these types of products for, you know, oh, you all natural honey. Wow, I never thought of that as a, yeah. as a natural sweetener, right? Yes. But, you know, the one thing I've learned is we learn from others, yes. hands down. So, you know, coming here in the United States, I do a lot of uh, travel. I've not traveled to Asia, but I, I respect mm -hmm. your culture overall. And um, here in the United States, uh, I'm learning from others about, you know, like the Moringa tree, the tree of life, you know, these, these different plants. Um, yes. So in my neighborhood, I have some great neighbors that, you know, we talk about ginger and turmeric and all the good yeah. foods that are, you know, uh, 
healthy for our digestive tract. And yes. What, you know, it's once again, that conversation goes right to the roots. Um, and when you're dealing with turmeric and ginger, those are root plants. And yeah, yeah. yeah, that yeah. grows in the soil. So we got to make healthy soils and not plugging my product here, but we have a natural soil enricher made okay. from 100% hemp that helps um, put nutrients back into the soils. So, oh, okay. you know, those are some of the things that we're doing in our consumer package goods, you know, helping, Interesting. helping uh, the growth of plants. So yes. it's a circular thing. So whether Absolutely. it's growing from the farm and we bring it right to the table or we bring it from the farm to the shelves, we try to be as sustainable in that whole process as possible. And so when it's on the shelf, uh, you can see these packages are really lively and colorful. Yes. So it draws to them, and the most do you see on our package is green. Yes. So that's the subliminal message. Oh, it's green. It's all natural. Yeah. And you know, the packaging is one of the best mediums that you can communicate about your brand to the consumer, right? So as you rightly mentioned that there are consumers who are you know, not really aware about, uh, they're not really concerned for the planet. So if they look at such kind of a packaging, they may, they may get aware about it, right? And that's how you, you make a difference uh, in people's mind. Yeah, and the other, the, the other part is, you know, a lot of people are just so used to the everyday brands that they go to, and I won't mention any other brands, um, but when they go on a regular basis, it's that habit. You got to break that habit. So when yes. they see something, usually people are buying on um, price or they're buying on um, something they know. So if you have a product that's very similar in price and they give it a try and then they uh, do a little research, they look at your product, they actually buy your product. Yes. And now you just change the customer's mindset. And now they go, okay, you know, the one thing with our hemp products is a lot of people pick it up and they'll be, oh, hemp, is this going to get, we have cat litter and animal bedding. Is, that's what we get all the time is my, is my um, animal going to get high off of this product yes. you know and the answer is no it's 100 percent of the stock it's yeah you know it's all <laughs> natural so that's that's a one misconception but as we continue to put products of hemp canaf jute into the market um at some point that's the new norm right absolutely, absolutely. that's a long-term mission right there. yeah yeah so Derek, I mean, uh, how do you see the new consumer trends in the North American uh, mainstream market now going forward? Well, I do see that the mindset is changing. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, the younger generations are starting to get behind in masses when, um, due to the social media outlets and in you know the way we can advertise now um, on the networks and the webs. Uh, I see the younger generations getting behind it uh, quicker um, because they're fresh minds and they can. So when I do my elevator pitch and the kids get it like that. Yeah. And yeah. when I was their age, I didn't even know what the word sustainable meant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I'm 51. When I explain it to a group of, uh, you know, high schoolers or junior high schoolers or even elementary school. Oh, that's, that's sustainable. So they get it. They, yes. Oh, and so right then the seed was planted in their mind. Yes. And so right then they're going out looking, Oh, this exists. This is in the market. So then they're the ones that are our future. So once you give them the seeds, they're out there expanding. So we're Absolutely. setting this up for the next generations. And I think I this kind of education is pretty much important, right? I mean, people from uh, students from the school are getting that, uh, which is the best. Yeah, and, and, and it makes sense to people, you know. Um, the thing I want to see is more, um, just more groups going out there um, and picking up the trash and, and planting, you know, whatever, just plant something green and, and, and replace of that, whether it's yes. flowers or, you know, and that's the other thing. Um, people don't understand the power of the, the, the healing of the foods because here in the United States, it's kind of been removed. So 
here in the United States, uh, I know people have products to sell, but you know, dandelions are extremely healthy and beneficial uh, for cleansing of your liver and kidneys. But we were taught here, oh, we put this weed killer on to get rid of the dandelions. <laughs> well, you know, I never put weed killer on and I teach my kids to go out and pick the dandelions and eat it and put it in your salads because that's how we've evolved as humans. Right. So we want to continue that message for evolution and, and it's the younger generations that get it much easier and quicker. They can adapt faster. So uh, coming down to my next question, uh, since of course you have talked about sustainability and uh, being an important element in the coming time. So you at the hemp farm are also, you know, ag aggressively working towards it. So what are those non-negotiables uh, for an emerging CPG brand to consider if you can give some tips to the, to the emerging organizations? Yeah, let me go to that. So uh, one of the things dealing with hemp, now I'm not on the everyday hemp farm. Um, I partnered with one of the first female hemp farmers in the United States, all my partners and colleagues. I don't own a, a farm just for clarity, but what I do know in the whole system and process um, is, you know, the first part is here in the United States is the testing and our quality control and then education and then um, compliance. So dealing right. with a hemp crop, that's what we have to go through. And I have enough experience and understanding of how the, the whole system and process has uh, worked under the rules and the guidelines set before us. And so that's been the learning curve here in the United States. Yeah. And, and it, it also dives into the supply chain. So right now, um, for countries like in Europe and some parts of Asia and even Canada, uh, they've had leaps and bounds uh, as far as growing this crop. So as far as the supply chain issue, they have no issues with it growing and staying under the, the um, threshold for THC tolerance, right? It's either 0.02% or 0.3% in different countries. So the United States is still learning that. And mm -hmm. as far as uh, that, that plays a big part on how you're going to put your products like these to the market. Because if you do get a big customer and you can't scale up fast enough, right. that goes back to the vertical um, in the supply chain. So you have to check um, testing. You have to check quality control. And you have to be in compliance. So those have to be a big factor of what you do. The equipment and the machinery is still a learning curve, but that's what we've done and mastered through many years of experience, trial and error, and then just going along and checking off the boxes in manufacturing and production. Awesome. So, and then you have to be into the design. I mean, we are completely vertical with, testing and we're always yeah. continuing doing r d um so that has to fall in the in the place of our business model you know right and uh we have a great team and everything that's been set uh in front of uh the company whether it's challenges it's how you adapt and overcome those challenges within and you know we're still dealing with a large crop so we have to look at the farmers how they're farming and processing because we're not talking just um, small scale production like on an acre we're talking thousands of acres yes for, to yes. keep up with the demand for the fiber the natural fibers and the natural seed for human consumption and, and also for animal consumption and so right. you know the everything we do is uh you know calculated and forecasted and so it's not an easy task. It is but, not, uh, I am sure. <laughs> I'm sure. No. So I hope that helps answer your question. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Good. So, uh, Derek, coming down to my next question. So, you know, you have been uh, successfully running the hemp farm for more than seven years now. So if you can throw some light on how you as an entrepreneur have grown as a brand in the, in the CPG space. Um, so in the consumer packaging good space, the brand is, uh, it all ties into basically what I was getting at. It's that finding that balance and getting that brand recognition out there and leading the way. And so there's a lot of people that 
have some good ideas and they have a product and then it's having the longevity and that's what we've been able to develop uh, uh, in Canada is the, you know, hemp sense is a brand that's been built over years. And so it's working within that inner community and that inner circle. And then it just grows out in the rings. And then now we're on the customer shelf. So um, that brand recognition is really growing. And um, when it, well, all I can say is it comes down to supply and having the abilities to put it all together. Right. Yep. And then um, uh, doing compliance, st staying within the compliance and the rules and the guidelines, and then also the um, uh, quality control. Okay. Because when mm -hmm. we're dealing with human food consumption, animal consumption, we Actually, stay within, yeah, the, I mean, there's ways you have to do it and stay compliant. So True. there's always testing and that helps strengthen our brand. You know? Yes. And that it's, also, you it's, know, a, it's that, a product people trust, you know. Yes, so. exactly, exactly. And that's how it, it makes you grow long term because the more customers will trust you, and that will help you to build that long term. That's that's what we're doing this for to continue uh, strengthening the communities, the people, and the organization, and just uh, growing the you know the farmers' confidence, knowing that every year they have an outlet for their crop. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the most important. So then that little circle grows bigger within that community yes. and outreach. And so it comes down to putting a great quality product on the market and that, that people trust and love. Yeah, I agree. So it's, it's a fine balance. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. So coming down to my last question for this session, so uh, what are those important aspects for a natural CPG brand to consider while designing its marketing and branding strategies? For, for one is to have your clear message. You know, for mm -hmm. us, our message is um, planting seeds of wellness for the people on the planet. And so yes. having that clear message and vision and mission, that's most important because that's uh, that's how you get the masses backing you and your products, because now with that seed planted in their mind, that once again goes back to, we know who these people are in business. We trust these people. They're putting out stellar products and they're always coming up with new innovations, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's the one thing is uh, having that clear message. And then the other part of that message right back to back is, we are 100% all natural. And when that is clear, and um, that's what we do for the design. It's green, yes. it's clean, legible, bold, people can see it. And that's the, that's the big message for that. Yeah, it is, I think, very much evident on the packaging behind you. So mm -hmm. that's what is, because as I had mentioned, right, it is the in product is that one important medium of marketing uh, about your brand to the consumer. So you can read biodegradable, yeah, completely compostable, all no natural or additives, all yeah, natural, yeah. conserves moisture. You know, and it's completely legible. There's very clean packaging. Very clean packaging. Very very nice. Easy, easy, easy to carry handle for the consumer out of the store. And right. then it came down to developing this product was um, not my doing, but it was a uh, president's doing. And it was along the lines that with that handle, it makes a clean, clear message, easy to carry out. And when it came, comes to the packaging, we, we decided on 10 pounds because that was just enough for light frame individuals to be able to lift it, put it yes. in their cart, and then go out the store and then yes. load it into their car and then bring it into the house. When we're dealing on the, we do have like a 45 pound bag for our bulk consumers, but for everyday consumer packaging, but that's what went into this decision making too. Absolutely. It's enough for people to see the clear message. It promotes the green, it promotes sustainability, and it's easy to carry and easy to use. Lovely. So. 
thank you yeah. so for this derek i think uh, the kind of responses which you have given are you know these i'm sure these will be super useful for the entrepreneurs who are now willing to get into the natural cpg space and of course who are already there it the, these insights would be helpful for uh, scaling them so, so we, much for we, we hope so and uh, yeah. we really do and if anybody is looking for assistance or guidance by all means we're here to help people you know get on the right track too yeah that's so kind of you <laughs> thank you so much once again for joining in and uh, really appreciate your time thanks thank you very much I appreciate your time and um you know feel free to contact us at any time for any tips or tricks or things of that nature sure thank you so much once again and you have a great day ahead thanks. you too thank you thanks